All right, guys. Since we are doing number theory, I decided to scour the internet and find another number theory problem that's not on code mark. Let's have a look at what I found. I think it's a very interesting problem. It's called number of digit one. You're given a number n. Find the number of occurrences of the digit one in all numbers that are less than or equal to n. So say n is 15. What are the numbers less than 15 that have one in them? One has one in it. 10 has one in it. 11 has two ones in it. 12 has one one. 13 has a one. 14 has a one. And 15 has a one. We have to include 15. That's a total of eight ones, which is why our output is eight. The constraints are that one is less than or equal to n is less than or equal to 10 power nine. First, we're going to try to establish a pattern. Let's say we go from zero to 10, now excluding 10. So basically zero to nine. How many times are we going to see one? We're going to see one just once in the number one. So when we move from zero to 10, excluding 10, we get one, one. Now let's move from zero to hundred, excluding hundred. In other words, zero to 99. Here we can see there are two blank digits. How many times will the units place have one in it? Zero one is going to have a one. 11 will have a one. So will 21, 31, 41, 51, 61, 71, 81, and 91. So the units place is going to be filled with one, a total of 10 times. As for the tens place, the tens place will also have 10 ones. That's 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, and 19. Each of them are going to have a total of 10 ones. So the total is going to be 10 plus 10, which is 20. Let's also have a look at zero to thousand. Here we can see there are three blanks. In how many ways can the hundreds place be filled? The hundreds place will only have one in it when we go from 100 to 199. That's a total of 100 ones. Now, in how many ways can the tens place be filled with one? We've already discussed that between zero and 100, we're going to have 10 occurrences of one in the tens place. That's from 10 to 90. Between 100 and 200, another 10 occurrences occur. That's between 110 and 190. This pattern repeats for 200, 300, 400, and so on up until 900. So the total number of ways we can fill this is 10 times 10, which is also 100. Similarly, the units place can be filled in 100 ways. So the general formula is, if we've got n blanks, each of the blanks can be filled in 10 power n minus one ways. So the total number of ones that can be filled in n blanks is n times 10 power n minus one. Here, we can clearly see a pattern. The number on the left keeps increasing. So one becomes two, two becomes three, three becomes four. The number keeps increasing by one. Furthermore, a zero keeps getting appended to the end. So first it's one with no zero following it. Then we've got two with a single zero. Then we've got three with two zeros, four with three zeros and so on. In general, the nth term is gonna have n minus one zeros following it. How do we use this information? Let's see. Let's have a look at this number, 2305, see if it follows the rule or not. Our goal is to iterate from left to right. And once we finish tackling each digit, we're going to forget about it. We're never going to revisit it. So the first digit is two and it's in the thousands place. So if you want to forget about it, you've got to calculate all the ones from zero to 2000. How many ones is that going to be? Now this place, that is the thousands place is going to have 1000 ones. That is from 1000 to 1999. There's no question about that. What about the remaining places though? We already know that between zero and 1000, there's a total of 300 ones. N times 10 power N minus one is 300. So between zero to thousand, if there's 300 occurrences of one, then between zero to 2000, there'll naturally be two times 300, which is 600 occurrences of one in the later three positions, in the hundreds, the tens and the ones position. That's why between zero to 2000, there is a total number of 1,600 ones. Now we're done with that position. The thousands position is over. It's done and dusted. 
when we talk about the 300th position, we've got to look at all the ones between 2000 and 2300. This position, that is the 100th position, is going to have a total of 100 ones. That is 2100 to 2199. The other two positions are going to have three times 20 ones for a total of 160. Whenever there's a zero, we simply ignore it. We skim over it. And between 2300 and 2305, there's just one one. That is 2301. That's why we sum up all of these to get our final answer, which is 1761. However, these rules don't apply whenever we encounter a one. Have a look at this number on your screen, 136. Now the last two digits will be filled in the exact same way. We know between zero and 100, there's 20 ones. However, this position, the hundreds position is not going to be 10 power n minus one. That's because whenever we look at numbers greater than one, that position has already been filled completely. Whether it's 200 or whether it's 800, that position can have a maximum of only 100 ones. If that number is 136 though, that's not going to be the case. How many valid numbers are in this range? It's just 100 to 136. Those are the only valid numbers with one in the hundreds place. That's why the answer in this case is all the numbers following one plus one. 100, 101, 102, so on, up until 136 for a total of 37 ones. Now we're done with the hundreds position. We have a look at the tens position. That's going to be 10 plus three into one, which is 13. And the ones position is going to be one, which is why our final answer will be 57 plus 13 plus one, which is 71. Here we can see the code. Now I've converted it into strings. It makes it easier to explain, but actually it's a lot more efficient if you do it using integers. That's my challenge to you guys. Try it out and comment down below if you have succeeded using only integers. But here's how you do it using strings in Python. Now we convert that integer into a string and we iterate from left to right. If that digit is zero, we simply skip it. We continue. If that digit is greater than one, then the current digit, that is that position can be filled in 10 power n minus one ways. This is the formula to calculate all the remaining digits. We've already calculated the most significant digit. Now we calculate all the digits following it. We add those two values to get the total number. Now, if that's not the case, if that number is one, then what do we do? Then we look at all the digits following it. That value plus one is going to be the total number of ones in the current position. The formula for all the subsequent digits is the same. And then we simply add those two values in order to get the total answer, which we add to our result. Let's see if this works. Sample has been passed and submit. Works as well. 